to everybody that is online today. Amen. Praise God. And hear me. All right. Amen. Um, do you know that song, I'm So Glad to Be in God's Service? Do you know that song? Oh, I'm glad to be in God's service. I'm so glad to be in God's service. I'm glad. to serving the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, do we have any other songs tonight? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to come and switch hit with me here? All right. <laughs> that sounds good. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord to those of you who are online. God bless you. I'm glad that you are here with us. And, uh, can help me out with this part. <laughs> Praise God. Um, as our sister Karen said earlier, she wished Pastor a happy birthday, and it is our pastor's birthday today. And so, um, and uh, also a happy birthday to Pastor um, Louis G. out of Lancaster. They had a ministry of care before. He and Pastor share a wonderful friendship and um, also birthday. And after uh, service today, we'll be having just a little bit of a celebration to celebrate uh, Pastor's birthday with some very yummy birthday cupcakes. Amen. All that stuff probably needs to be plugged in. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. Oh, we stand and we just worship the Lord as our technical difficulties get taken care of. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, we give you the glory. You're good, Lord. I pass the time to Jesus. Lord, I want to say thank you that you are more than worthy. Lord, if it hasn't been for you on our side, Lord. Yeah. 
Blessed be the name of Jesus. my desire that he reigns in my life. Amen. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Praise God. I am thankful, thankful, thankful for him. Amen. We are continuing with both our challenge and our Bible study series uh, called Witness. Everybody say Witness. Witness. Amen. So we are excited about what God is teaching us and helping us to grow in with this Bible study series. Amen. Everybody is called to be a witness. Amen. Amen. And so without further ado, we're going to invite uh, the woman of God to break the word of God. And we are excited about what God has to say tonight. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. And I want to thank him for this time of, um, for uh, July's or June's challenge with us. And so we want to be witnesses of the Lord or of the Lord, put it in more today's terms. Let's just go before the Lord very quickly. Heavenly Father, you're here and we're here. And so, Father, I pray in your mighty name, Jesus, if you are already in this place, but God, I pray, Lord, enter into our minds, enter into our hearts, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that tonight, Lord Jesus, you'll set the captive free. I pray that tonight, Lord, your word will bring comfort and relief and strength. Father, I pray in your mighty name, Jesus, that you would allow me to speak your word, not my own opinion, but your word, Lord, whatever you desire me to say, let me say that and nothing more, nothing less. Jesus, have your way in this place, Lord. God, it's our desire, Lord God, that our sheep, your sheep be fed. And Lord God, I want to receive the feeding that you're giving. In your holy and mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Very quickly, we're going to go to um, two verses. We're going to go again to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And Acts chapter 1, verse 8 should be a core verse for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. This is a verse that each of us, if you haven't already, you should memorize it. It's an important verse. Jesus, as he was speaking to his disciples, setting my glasses aside because it's hard to see with my glasses on the close, but as you can well tell, if I'm reading the words up there, it's very difficult for me to see when it's not, um, when my glasses are not on my face. Praise God. Um, so this is a core verse and every single person, every Christian really should know it by heart among many other verses, but this is a verse that is a strength to you as a Christian. Um, and Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says this, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples um, just before he is taken up into heaven. Right? Um, you may be seated. The other verse that we're going to look at, and we looked at both these verses last week as well. We're going over to um, Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs 25. Actually, I'm sorry. Proverbs 14, verse 25. Proverbs 14, verse 25. 14, 25. And Proverbs 14, verse 25 says this. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. A true witness delivereth souls. A true witness delivereth souls. 
Last week we talked about Peter's witness. We talked about witnessing, but we also talked about Peter's witness. And I want you guys to understand how important the apostles um, found witnessing and how important the word of God was to them and how important it is um, for present day for each and every one of us to be a witness. We live in a culture where people would prefer that we um, live our Christian life quietly, that we don't interrupt anybody else's life, that we don't impact anybody else's life, and not only the culture that we live in, but the enemy of our souls would also prefer that you live as a good Christian, just mind your business, right? Live as a good Christian, but mind your business. Don't touch anything, don't impact anything, don't say anything. Just live your life, coexist, as the world likes to put it. We can all just coexist. But if we are living as godly people, if we're living as the Christians, the called out ones, the witnesses that God has called us to be, that Christ died on the cross for us to become, then we are going to interrupt a lot of things in this earth. We're going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. The witness of Jesus Christ is not something that's taken lightly that, you know, people, it's going to make everyone comfortable. Everyone's going to say, oh, yay. That's not what's going to happen. Right? The truth of the gospel, the Bible says it's going to be a stumbling block for some people. Right? Some people are not going to find it comfortable when they encounter the truth of the gospel in their lives. Amen? And so when you become a witness and you and you are a witness that cares very much that you that you are repeating and replicating the truth of the word of God, you are going to um, you're going to shake some foundations. Yeah. You're going to shake some foundations, Amen. and that's what I want to be. I want to be that kind of witness where I'm going to shake some foundations where the enemy's not going to like what's happening. And so when that happens. We are going to encounter some challenges. But Jesus Christ is both our shield and our buckler. And what that means is he's got you from the front and he's got you from the back. And so there is no way that as you are as you are speaking the truth and, and the truth is working in your life, right. that God won't have you. He's got your back and your front. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Witness. Witness. That's our challenge for June. Peter was a witness. As we talked about him last week, he walked with Jesus for a little over three years. And we mentioned that Peter preached what Jesus preached. Jesus preached repentance. Peter preached repentance. Jesus preached that you ought to be, um, you've got to be born again of the water and the spirit. Peter preached you got to be born again of the water and the spirit. It is very, very important that we stick to the witness that Jesus first showed to us. He gave us the template of what the gospel is. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we want to stick to that template. It is important to be a true witness. A true witness delivers souls. This, this verse impacts my life. It impacts my thinking. It impacts my heart because I, I, I love souls. I love souls. Now, I want to I wanna say this. I understand that we may so much want to see people saved. We want to see souls saved. But the soul is packaged in this people body, in this flesh. Right? And sometimes as people, excuse me, as human beings, we may find it difficult to deal with the package. Sure. Right? The package. We find it difficult at times to deal with the package. But that's where the soul dwells. So we've got to learn to not only love the soul, we've got to learn to love the package. We've got to love people. We've got to be able to connect with people. That's not necessarily an easy or inviting thing for me because nobody likes to, you know, the idea of maybe they won't accept what I'm saying. Right? Maybe they won't like what I'm saying. But their response is not your issue. 
How somebody responds to the gospel is not your issue. God has to handle that part. Our part is making sure that we are a true witness. Being a true witness. Praise God. James 5, 19 and 20 says this. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, do err from the truth. Now, when you read that first line, what, is it, what does it see, say to you? It's, it, or, or have an error from the truth. What does that mean for you? What does that mean? Is it the same as sin? Or how does it, what, is it, what does that mean to you? If you hear error, what is it? You make an error. Making an error, right? And when you hear that, I don't know, if, but for me, when I, when I read that first line, it doesn't seem like, well, they, they might have slipped. What did you say? It's not transparent. It's not, like... it's not transparent. It's not quite, you know, not quite what it should be. But it doesn't seem like it's terrible. You know, it doesn't seem awful. And so that first line, if any do err from the truth and one convert him. Now, this is the line that always impacts me. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner, because now it has called it called him a sinner. He hasn't just erred from the truth, he's a sinner. And so, um, converteth the sinner from the error of his way, shall save a soul from, is anybody there? Is anybody at James 5, 19 and 20? Death. Death. Shall save a soul from death. This package is going to go at some point in, in the uh, medical care uh, world. Um, you might say that this will expire. You know, they say that it's a nice way to say it. It doesn't sound as bad when I say, oh, they expired, you know. Because really, that's how it is. There is an expiration date on each and every one of us, right? None of us knows what that date is. But there is an expiration date for each and every package or every person. But the soul that's within the package is everlasting. Right. This soul is forever. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us don't fear the one that can only kill the body, but fear the one that can kill both body and soul. Right? It is God. He's the only one. The enemy can threaten us and, and threaten our lives, but all he can do is damage the body, to damage the package. But Jesus Christ has given us new life and life everlasting. And so I'm not concerned with the enemy that wants to damage the package, but Jesus Christ can keep the goods. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Jesus Christ can keep the goods. He's able to keep that which has been committed unto him. Amen. He can keep us. And somebody say, he can keep me. He can keep us. Praise God. So it is important to understand the importance of us being a true witness. One, you deliver souls. Two, you save a soul from death. Amen. A soul. Not a person, but a soul from death. The Bible talks about that second death. You know, there's a first death on this earth, but that second death, if we don't allow God to change and transform our lives and our thinking and our hearts, then we have we're, we're, we are in danger of that second death. Amen, that's true. Amen. I need somebody to find a verse for me. It says, um, if a righteous man scarcely be saved, I need that verse. If a righteous man scarcely be saved, does that mean the verse before it and, the, and that verse? Anyone have it yet? Word is the sinner and the godly, ungodly the two. Amen. Let's see if I can find it here. It is important to be a true witness. A true witness. Let me know if somebody finds it. You have it yet? It is important to be a true witness. 
It is important that the bride, the church of the living God, are all testifying or all witnessing of the same gospel. Of the same gospel. You found it? First Peter 4. 418. Thank you. First Peter 418. First Peter four eighteen. And we're gonna start at verse fifteen. Matter of fact, we'll start at verse 16. Peter says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed. Let him not be ashamed. But let it glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of the worst sinner on earth. Come on, we know that's not what it says. Wait, at the house of LGBTQ? No. No, that's not what it says. Judgment is going to begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be them that obey not the gospel of God? And verse 18, if the righteous scarcely, scarcely, what does scarcely mean? What is scarcely? Barely. Barely. Give me another synonym for scarcely. I guess barely really is the best. What is it? Almost. Almost. Good. Anybody else? Just about. (laughs) (laughs) Just about. (laughs) By the skin of their teeth. All of those things can come as, you know, kind of a visual for you. Because that's not something we think about. If the righteous scarcely, barely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Right? And sometimes you hear people in the world say things like, well, you know, I know that I'm not in church, but God knows my heart. Anybody ever heard that? I've heard that. Sure. I've heard it. Yeah. God knows my heart. And so, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? In other words, if the if the righteous is is gonna barely make it, why why would God say that? Why would the Bible say that? Why would Peter write that? Because he understands that even though we are water baptized and we are Uh, full of the Holy Ghost, we are still making mistakes. There are, we still stumble at some things. God is still working on us. Amen. There's a, there's a Sunday school song that says, he's still working on me um, to make me what I ought to be. Amen. And so God is still working on each and every one of us. And so that's why you have that. If the righteous scarcely be saved, then where do you think the sinner and the ungodly are going to uh, end up? And so I, I'm saying this verse to encourage you: if they, if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And if they're lost, then where are they going to end up? Amen. Come on, what did you say, Diane? Oh. Hell. Come on, we don't like that word. I don't, I, I'm sitting here saying it. I'm like, oh, you don't want to say that. But that's the truth. They will not make it to heaven. And I want to see everyone make it to heaven. The Bible says, God says that it's not his desire that anybody should perish, but that we all come to the knowledge of repentance. Amen. Amen? Amen. It's not his desire, but everyone will not make it because everyone will not obey the gospel. There are going to be too many people that believe, I've got time. I'm still young, you know? Well, I know what to do, and when I'm ready. Those are words that you hear, when I'm ready. 
But God is calling right now. If he is joined now, then today is the day of salvation. Amen? Amen. And so we have to continue to be a witness. Why? Because if the, if the righteous scarcely make it, where will the ungodly and the sinner end up? Amen. What chance do they have is what it's really saying. If we're barely making it, what chance do they have without the gospel? Amen. Praise God. The gospel is important. The gospel is the power of the church. The, the, the gospel is, is what brings life. Amen. And the gospel is only made alive through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no gospel unless Jesus came, lived, died, was buried, and raised again. Amen. Jesus Praise God. A true witness delivers souls. And they convert the sinner from their error, saving their soul from death. Witnessing is important. Don't take it lightly that if God puts a soul on your heart, or you get the opportunity and the privilege and the honor of speaking into somebody's life to speak God's word, to speak the truth of Jesus Christ into their lives, and they receive God's word, they receive the, the word with, with, with joy, and then they mix it with faith. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It is important that every witness speaks the same truth. Each and every one of us has a different experience. And when we look at the, the New Testament, there's another witness, Paul. His witness was different. His experience was different. But the gospel he preached was the same. Amen. The gospel he preached was the same. We don't get the, 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 um, we don't get the, what's the word that I'm looking for? We don't get the opportunity. It's not really, we don't have the right. That's the word I'm looking for. We don't have to, the right to change this gospel. Man does not have the right to make the gospel more palatable, easier to receive. That's not our right. That right only comes from one person and comes for one person. That's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that died for it. Amen. It's only his blood that's been shed for it. Amen? Amen. And so you've got to understand how important preaching this right gospel is. It's not a Pentecostal gospel. It's not an apostolic gospel, although it, it kind of is because it's what the apostolics, what the apostles preach. And so we preach what the apostles preach. Amen? And so that's why when you hear us say we're apostolic, why? We're following the same thing they did back then. We're not looking at a more contemporary gospel. I'm not looking for the word of God to suddenly change and go, you know what? God is, I, I don't think this really applies to people anymore. Has anybody ever read the Bible and wondered, why is this even in here? Because it's something that reflects today. Amen. I have. When I was wondering if Jesus Christ still loved me, when I was in my dorm room and I was praying, and God had already told me he loved me, but here I was feeling all down on myself, and I'm like, oh, Lord, do you still love me? <laughs> and God was so mindful of my whining. He was. He was so mindful. But he didn't come and yell at me and go, I already told you what is wrong with you. He didn't do that. He very tenderly allowed me to open to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 3. I'm going to go over there. But he very sweetly led me to Jeremiah 31, verse 3. I'm asking him, Lord, do you still love me? That Those were the words that I spoke to. Do you still love me? Because I felt very unworthy and I just felt like, why would God even want to use me? Why, why, why would he even bother with me? 
I wasn't sinning or anything, but the condemnation was heavy nonetheless. And I got up from, I was kneeling on the floor and just praying by my bed in my dorm room. My roommate wasn't there, and so I was taking advantage of the time. And when I got up, I, I, I finished asking him that, and I just got up, and I sat on my bed, and I flipped open my Bible, and immediately, verse 3 just jumped, I didn't even read 1 and 2, verse 3 just jumped out at me. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Every time I, I testify about this, or every time I read this verse, it's a testimony to my own heart. Amen? And so I get to be a witness of my experience. But the gospel that I preach and teach to anybody is going to be the Lord lived and he came on earth. He, God clothed himself in flesh and he lived and he taught and he preached. And you know what? He was slain on a cross. His blood ran down that cross. Water and blood came out of his side. He died and then he was buried. And three days later, he was risen just for you and just for me. So when I'm talking to somebody, I'm saying, let me tell you how much Jesus loves you. Let me tell you what Jesus Christ did for you. And they may have some questions. They may have some questions like, you don't understand what I did. Will God still accept me? Will God still wash away my sins? Will God still forgive me? And you can say, you know what? I know the answer. The answer is yes. Jesus loves you so much. His blood is so powerful that it still runs down. It still covers sins. Praise God. This blood is not so old that it no longer works. This is an everlasting love. And the fact that you're even feeling like this, that you are feeling drawn to Jesus, it's not because of your goodness. Because I love him. Because he first loved me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. And so when somebody comes and says, I've committed some sins. I've done some unthinkable things. I need you to understand. Can Jesus do it? Oh, I can say, yes, he can. Yes, he can. When my kids were little, we used to watch this show, uh, Bob the Builder. My son knew that I was coming with this. He could tell. Bob the Builder, what was her name? Lofty. <laughs> lofty. What kind of a construction thing was she was lofty? She was like a uh, like one of those power lifts that you see at work on like power lines and stuff. So that was a lofty. And every time the team says, "Can we fix it?" and then everybody would go, "Yes, we can." And then lofty would come out with, "Um, I think so. Um, I think so." And so. My oldest, he can't stand lofty. I can't. And so, sometimes, if we're sitting there going, mm, you know, I, when somebody's in pain, they're broken, and they're wondering, can Jesus fix me? Can he set me free? Can he make me whole? As a witness and as a Christian, I don't care where you're at in your life, your answer needs to be, yes, he can. Don't let it be, um, I think so. No, no, no. Yes, he can. If he did it then, he can do it now. Amen. And if you have the pleasure and the honor of going through and being able to say, let me tell you what Jesus did for me, I know he can do it for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. A true witness delivers souls. Yes, he can. Amen. Praise God. We've got to all be speaking the same gospel. There are places where people gather together and they say that they're here to worship God. They're here to worship Jesus. But let me tell you, if they are not speaking this same thing, if they're not speaking this gospel, there's a problem. This gospel, matter of fact, Paul says um, in Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9, 
But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. So here's 9. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. In other words, he was saying to them, if somebody else comes with another word, Matter of fact, there's a part where he says they've come with another gospel, but it's it's not so much another gospel, but they have they 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 messed up. They've they what's the word that the Bible uses on that? They have perverted. perverted. They've perverted the gospel. How does somebody do that? Because they're preying on those that are hungry, they're preying on the desperate, they're preying on those that are looking for something. But I'm so grateful that Jesus is not standing just, you know, in heaven watching and hoping that it works out for you, but rather he's going to step in and make sure that your ears are open and your eyes are open. And if you're hungry for Jesus, Jesus shows up. Philippians 3.16 says, Nevertheless, where to, this is Paul talking to the, Philipp, the church at Philippi, the Philippian church, nevertheless, where to, we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. It matters where you go to church. It matters who you're letting speak into your life. It matters what is being taught. It matters what you're receiving. It matters. Because Paul said, we should all be saying the same thing. Let's all walk by the same rule. He said, we've already got this gospel. We've already received this gospel. And so we ought to be walking by the same rule because we're living by the same gospel. Let us mind the same thing. When he was at the Galatian church, writing to the Galatian church, he says to them, wait a second, after he realized there's some people that have come in and they've been acting a fool and they've been doing stuff that ought not to be done, he says to them, he says, wait a second, are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Has your flesh suddenly showed up as God? The only time flesh showed up as God was when God came and showed up as flesh. As Jesus Christ. But we cannot begin in the spirit and then end in the flesh. There are so many places, so many denominations who they started in the spirit. They might say that they had they had a Pentecostal experience. Their church began with a with a supernatural experience, but now they're walking and, and they're going by the just by their flesh. They believe, but they never obeyed the gospel. Right. We can't just believe the gospel. There has to be a, an obedience to the gospel. Amen. That's the truth. Jesus. Jesus. A true witness is important. A true witness delivers souls. I don't know if you understand the depth of delivering, delivering a soul. You have taken them out of the, the enemy's camp. You've, you've taken them out from the, the fire that was licking at the soles of their feet. You've delivered a soul. Amen. And I know, let me, let me make sure that we are all aware, it is not by our own power. The only power is the, the power of the Holy Ghost. The only power is the power of the gospel. The only power is the power of the word of God. But don't be fearful to speak it just because everybody won't agree. Amen. It's still the truth. Amen. The truth is still the truth. Amen. It is still important. Yes. This gospel is the only word of God, the only gospel that's going to change humanity. Amen. The word works. The word still works. The blood still works. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. 
Matthew 23 and, well, let's, I'm sorry. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received. And wherein ye stand, in other words, it is the same gospel that you are walking in. This is the gospel that ye received before, the gospel that I've preached unto you, by which also you are saved. It is the gospel that saves. Amen? Amen. By grace through faith, yeah. we are saved. By which also you are saved. If you keep in memory that I preached um, what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Now we gotta remember something about Paul. Paul was not there with Jesus. Paul did not get to witness of Jesus. I'm sure wherever Paul was, he was hearing all of what was happening yeah. with Jesus. Yeah. He probably heard about the miracles. Yeah. He probably heard about how many people, you know, he had fed the 5,000. What? He heard. But Peter was skeptical. Peter believed very much in the law of Moses. Right. Peter, you know, he was a teacher of the law of he, he It was important to him. And so although, P uh, I'm sorry, Paul, I'm saying Peter, although Paul found himself doing the wrong thing, he was doing the wrong thing for the right reasons, but nevertheless, it's the wrong thing. Amen. Right? Yeah. Amen. He was killing, killing uh, Christians and all of that, but Paul, Paul didn't come to Christ the same way Peter came to Christ. His experience was different, but here in verse 3, he says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. The gospel was the same for him. He was um, on that road to Damascus. We know the story. He was on that road to Damascus. When suddenly a bright light, matter of fact, he was going to snatch up some Christians. He was going to roll into their homes and their houses, drag them out, drag out their kids, drag out. He was going to take them to jail. He had letters from, you know, all the people that are in charge. And they were like, don't do it, Paul. You're going to do it. But at the time, his name was Saul, right? And so Saul made Paul had a Damascus Road experience. His experience was different. But the gospel that he preached was the same gospel he received. Right? When Ananias showed up and said to him, Paul, what are you just sitting there for? Come on and get up and be baptized and have your sins washed away. He received the same gospel that they received. Your experience might be different, but you ought to be speaking that same word. Amen? You ought to be receiving that same gospel. And so we want to be those that um, those uh, people that, you know what, if something, if you hear something wrong, if, if you're like, wait a second, you know what, they love the Lord. I, I know that person really wants to, wants to get to know Jesus better. We can't just sit by and go, oh, well, you know what, that's up to God to do it. What I mean by that is, if we pop over to Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, verse 1 through
We're going to do one through six. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, now Apollo, Apollos, you can read in the previous chapter, you can read how he came to be with Paul and to, you know, where he was at in his life. Um, he was a mighty preacher and some folks that were with Paul helped to um, clarify the truth of the gospel to him. So now Apollos was now with Paul's group and began to follow the same gospel that they were preaching and teaching. So here is, you know, it says that Apollos was at Corinth, but Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding there certain disciples, right? Right. He, ha he said unto them, he, he's talking to them, he calls them disciples because they are seeking, they're living the best Jesus life they know how, mm -hmm. Right. They haven't heard the whole gospel, but they know that Jesus is the Messiah. They know that it's him coming, that he's God come in flesh. They know that there was, there was someone that, um, that, that John has spoken about this Messiah. And so to the limit that they knew how, they were living unto Jesus. Yeah. But how many of you know if you're hungry, God is going to feed you? Amen. If you're thirsty, he's going to give you living water. Amen. He's not leaving you on the side of the road and hope you work it out and figure it out. That's not who the good shepherd is. He's a good shepherd and a good father. And if we being um, uh, not good fathers or good parents know how to give good gifts, more so your father in heaven is going to give you good gifts. Amen. God does not give you backhanded compliments. And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said to them, and you know, he's having that conversation. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they were like, oh, and it said unto him, um, we haven't heard so much as we haven't so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Yeah. They were like, uh, what are you talking about? Mm. And he said unto them, Hold on. How are you baptized? And the reason he asks that is because when they were preaching the gospel, repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost were preached together, just like we do today. Right. And so when they said, we've never heard of the Holy Ghost, he was like, mm, how are you baptized? Right. Because there were some people that they'd already met that had been Baptized unto John's baptism. And so, they, so he was waiting to see where they were at in their Christian walk. And they said unto John's baptism. And Paul said, you know, John, he, he barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So sometimes we may come in contact with people who have been baptized, but they've been baptized in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or they've been baptized as a baby, you know, as, as, as a child, and, and there was no understanding of repentance. And let me say this. If there's no understanding of repentance, there shouldn't have been baptism. You've got to understand repentance in order to be baptized. Amen. That's why we don't baptize babies. If a, if a young person is asking for baptism, they have to be able to tell me why. Yeah. And if they don't know why, then I'm going to sit down and have a Bible study with them. I'm going to talk to them about repentance. I'm going to talk to them about what the Bible um, says about repentance and, and baptism or what baptism is for. Amen. I'm not going to go just for the sake of saying, oh, I'm getting somebody baptized. Let me just get them in the water. But rather, I want them to understand. Right. Just Not just understand the term repentance, but understand the power of repentance and the power of being baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And so here were these disciples that, that Paul is talking to. And I just want to share this with you. At many times in my life, I'll meet wonderful Christians, wonderful people who love Jesus. And I realize that they've been believers, but they haven't obeyed the gospel. 
And immediately I'm like, my, my answer to that is Jesus, I need an open door. I need an open door. I need to talk to them about you. Right. You know, and I start praying for, you know, at the time I used to call them my ex-19ers. And I'm like, Lord, you got to give me an open door. i got to talk to these people. And I was concerned because I'm like, Jesus, you love these people. And they love you. I can't believe that you're just going to leave them in the place that they're at. Right. But can I tell you something? When I began to pray for them, God began to give me an open door. Amen. When I began to pray for them, my husband was able to baptize some of them. Amen. The ones that received it. Amen. Praise God. Don't be afraid of this truth. This truth is really truth. There is power in this. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. This word is still powerful. God wants a church with power. When we've got people that say, I just believe, but they haven't obeyed the gospel, the enemy doesn't mind that because then he's dealing with people who believe themselves that have power, but he knows he, that they don't. And so he can deal with them any way he wants to. Amen. Because they don't have the power of the name or the power of the Holy Ghost in order to have some discernment. Right. Amen? Amen? Come on. This gospel has to be preached. It has to be taught. It has to be spoken. Why? Because a true witness delivers a soul Amen. and saves a soul from death. Amen. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's lift up Jesus. Why don't we stand together? Those who are online, thank you for being with us. God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday.